So let's talk about the business of football a, a little bit. Obviously, winning helps you make money, but you don't have to win to make money. As a, as a lifelong Cubs fan, I, I know about a franchise, unfortunately, that, that doesn't win and is very valuable and successful and profitable. So talk about that a little bit, if you would. Well, I think everybody has a different out, outset on what they want to do as a, as a team owner, as a team executive. Mm -hmm. And we want to win first and foremost. Now, you can't forget that it's a business. And there are different people that go about winning in different ways or go about business in different ways. They, you know, some don't care, like you said, about you know, if, I, if I win or not. I just want to profit. Well, I'm not suggesting that, I, that they, I don't don't think care, they don't care, but that it's possible to but, profit without winning. But it's winning. possible to profit without winning. And some people put profit ahead of winning. Mm -hmm. That's not what we do. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that the 49ers continue to have success, continue to, to be able to compete for a championship year in and year out. But when you're, when you're measuring it, you have to understand that you know, we need a new building to be able to compete with the top market teams that are out there. If somebody is generating hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue more than you are when you're in an old, you know, unrenovated building like Candlestick, it's very hard to compete. Mm -hmm. So that's where the business and the actual game on the field come hand in hand. Let me challenge you on that. How is it hard to uh, co compete? How? Because you have a... You have less resources. But I mean, you have if somebody a, has $100 million more a year to spend... Uh -huh. You know, but you're not competing against them. They, they, they're not, uh, they have no fans. They're selling seats in Kansas City or, or You're competing on the field. Th ah. That's what I mean. So, I mean, the more ah. revenue you generate, the ah. more money you can spend on your team, whether ah. that's facilities, whether that's you know, being able to spend larger signing bonuses on players, being able to bring in you know, higher-paid coaches, those types of things. That's where I'm talking about competing. Got it. Now, we do have a salary cap which everybody functions under virtually the same amount of dollars that you can spend. But the more cash you can spend, you can sort of extend your cap a little bit more. You can be a little bit more flexible with what you're doing and how you're spending. So uh, Forbes estimates the 49ers revenue $245 million and operating income at $30 million. Are these roughly accurate figures? Now, we don't talk about our numbers, um, and I, I, I don't think that those are are necessarily accurate. From a, a, quali a qualitative perspective then, rather than a quantitative perspective, how do you think about profitability? As a private company, you have tremendous leverage, right? You can, you can bring it up, you can bring it down, depending on the investments you want to make. Right, and, and I think that's what's important. You know, when you look at sort of a stock market quarterly driven earnings process, I don't know that that's necessarily the right way to build a long-term successful company. Mm -hmm because what you do in the short run is not necessarily what's best for your company in the long run. And I think that's where we are in sports. You want to make sure that there are times where you are more profitable in a year and there are times where you're less profitable in a year. And when are you spending CapEx? When are you putting money back into your team? And how are you doing that successfully so that you can be competitive on the field for the foreseeable future?